those who trust in him will never be abandoned. He is a fortified tower of safety for all those who run to him. brothers and sisters yesterday we spoke about how we should receive the Holy Spirit and today we're going to dwell on the topic of discernment of spirits it's very important that we discern each spirit the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us so that you and I can become the body of Christ more fully uh, and we may conform our lives with that of Jesus Christ however as these gifts operate Sometimes you and I can experience that what happens isn't really building up the body of Christ. And therefore we need to discern the spirits, the spiritual gifts that we receive, the consolations that we receive, etc. in prayer. And this is a very important topic in the spiritual life. Many can be misled. In fact, St. Paul will tell us in the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 14, that Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. Many of the things that we experience, the devil can mimic. However, we must remember that the devil can never mimic Christ perfectly. And so there is always this chink in his armor. There is always this image that is not perfect. And focusing on that imperfection, we know whether something comes from God or from the evil spirit. 
St. John will tell us in his first letter to John, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 and following, he invites us to test every spirit. And so the question really is, how do we test the spirits? There are various ways in which you can do this. And I'd like to suggest four steps that you can really use. The first one is your feelings. You see, God has given us emotions and feelings. And at a very, very basic level, what you need to feel when something is done is to feel good. But not just good in the sense of being happy, in the sense of being entertained. That goodness can come even from watching a movie. But when God speaks to us, when God reveals himself to us, there are three telltale signs that we, that we experience. One, as Jesus tells us, joy. Joy that the world cannot give. There is a deep sense of joy, a deep sense of peace in making this decision. And third and most important, we are motivated to move closer to God. This is a litmus test. You may have peace and joy and sometimes you may even experience that depth of peace and joy. But does this make you come closer to God? Does it make you lose yourself in God? That is the feeling that you must look for. Whatever the decision you're making, whether it's a decision about doing something, about purchasing a place, about the gifts of the Spirit, about a vocation to the priesthood or to the religious life or to marriage, look for these telltale signs. The second is what Jesus himself gives us. In the Gospels, especially in the Gospel of John, we find the what we refer to as the I am statements of Jesus. Now, Jesus is the perfect image of God. And every time he uses an I am statement, he refers to what God revealed to Moses. I am who I am. In fact, this year's calendar of the Archdiocese is based on those I am statements. And therefore, if you look at the seven I am statements that we find in the Gospel of John, you can list them out and check whatever is happening, whatever decision you're making, uh, whether it corresponds with that I am statement. For example, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. By doing something or by experience something, are you hearing the voice of Jesus? Are you really following Jesus? The second, perhaps what Jesus says in that same passage is, I am the door to the sheepfold. Whoever enters through me finds shelter. Whoever goes out through me finds pasture. The decision that you're making, do you find that you are sheltered in God? And when you reach out and perform whatever task is at hand, do you find pasture? What exactly is pasture? Pasture really means that you find God is with you. You find the hand of God with you. And as we come to the end of this talk, you'll realize in a deeper way what we mean by this. Jesus says, I am the true wine. Remain in me. If you remain in me, you will bear fruit and fruit that will last. We've already spoken of these two aspects when we spoke of discernment of spirits, bearing fruit for Jesus and bearing fruit that will last. I may do something that may be nice at the moment, but does this last? Does this movement last? Very clearly you can see Jesus is guided by the Spirit. He chose 12 men and he had disciples and he sent them out. And to this day, 2000 years after that, we still have the church. So there is fruit and fruit that will last. When I make a certain decision, when I look at my own life, I made a decision so many years ago about joining the priesthood. That decision has lasted. And today, I feel that same joy that I felt then every time I think of my decision to join the priesthood. This is what we mean. If we remain in Jesus, we will bear fruit and fruit that will last and so on. You can go through all the other I am statements of Jesus. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the light of the world, etc. The third aspect is a very, very basic theological rule. St. Thomas Aquinas points this out to us and he says, grace builds on nature. That means as our nature develops, you and I will become more inclined towards God 
or towards evil depending on which way we go and this is a very very important thing so what we need to do is to develop our nature according to the plan of God and we will notice this St. John of the Cross for example will tell us that God at the beginning of our spiritual life will give us a lot of consolations and these consolations are good because without these we would not be inclined towards God everything we do every choice we make is because we gain a certain pleasure out of it we gain a certain happiness and the same rule applies also to the spiritual life if I do not get any happiness I will not follow that life as simple as that and so the beginning is always one of consolation the first steps in the spiritual life are levels of consolation but later on St. John of the Cross will tell us that God will withdraw these consolations why not because he wants to tease us not because he is a ruthless God but because God wants to move us from consolation to himself very often we can get lost in what we do and we forget to focus on God and this is why God will remove these consolations from time to time so God helps us develop our nature in such a way that we are more and more inclined towards God take for example I go for the first time to a prayer meeting or I come for mass after a long time and I find great consolation I love the sermon the singing everything happens uh, I'm very very excited I feel a deep peace and calm consolation however does this lead me to a deeper relationship with God coming to that that is the fourth point how do I know that I have built this relationship with God very very simple look for two things it's the rule that Jesus gave us if you want to be my disciple take up your cross and follow me by this will all all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another and so these are the two things we must look for one is the love for God in doing a certain thing am I more inclined to God do I experience God more if I do not then something is wrong either in the way that I am doing it or in the very thing that I am doing or seeking to do that's the first thing the second is love for neighbor St. John will tell us how can you say that you love God whom you cannot see if you cannot love your brother whom you can see love of neighbor is proof that you love God and you're moving closer to God in as much as you reach out to society to people you will come closer to God and therefore the acts of charity are something that the church emphasizes time and again the acts of mercy the spiritual works of mercy the corporal works of mercy look at your life am I doing these things if I am then I am certainly on the right path I must reach out because I love God in loving God I love his creation I reach out to his creation that follows naturally look at the life of Jesus he loved God tremendously what did he go out doing he went out giving his life for people healing people curing people reaching out to people preaching the good news you will recognize all these things in your life and you will know that you are closer to God and so whenever something happens in your life when you make a discernment look for these telltale signs the first your feelings second refer to the I am statements that tell you who Jesus is and are you becoming more like Jesus the third is your nature growing in the right direction are you more disposed towards God and fourth do you love God can you see it in the way you deal with your neighbor with everyone around you and finally if you want to go deeper into discernment we have the works of Saint Ignatius of Loyola for example who gives us 14 very simple rules for discernment of spirits you could pick up that book very easily and you will find many uh, books many translations of this I'd recommend Gallagher he does a brilliant job of this you can read these books and you will slowly develop this thing still it becomes second nature to you thank you my dear brothers and sisters for joining us on this journey 
through these nine days. God bless you. May you be filled with the Spirit. Remember to discern every spirit and remember most of all, become more and more like Jesus. It's all that matters.